Hi everyone, I'm Doug from Now TV uh, here at Woburn Golf Club, joined by golf legend Ian Poulter, who has kindly agreed to answer some questions for us ahead of this month's British Masters. What does the rebirth of the British Masters mean for British golf? For British golf, I yeah. think it's very exciting. We have been starved of this tournament for many years, and you know it's coming back to its rightful home at Woburn Golf Club through all of the years that I was growing up as a kid and a sports fan. I remember the names, obviously Seve. Uh, Faldo, Woozy, Lyle, so many, so many guys that came to this golf course, played one. Mm. Um, we've now got the tournament coming back. And I remember uh, 2002 uh, when Justin and I played and um, he, unfortunately for me, decided to beat me by a shot. But we had, we had an incredible, uh, an incredible duel on the Sunday afternoon, 15 birdies between us. And, um, you know, it really was some great toe-to-toe -to -toe action. Mm. Is there anyone we should be looking out for this year? Any young stars? You've got a number of great names. Danny Willett's in great form. And there's a whole host of other youngsters which, which are playing some great golf. Mm. I, think, I think it's going to be exciting. Obviously, Westy, Donald, uh, hopefully Rose um, will come back again. And obviously, um, if that happens, it's going to be a superb tournament. Slight, slightly serious question. Not really. Uh, who is the funniest golfer on tour? Who, who's the funniest golfer yeah. on tour? Mm. Uh, Henrik Stenson, okay. which you wouldn't believe. No. You just don't think he's funny, to be mm. honest with you, but he's actually got an incredible sense of humour. Uh, loves playing practical jokes mm. all the time, which is good because most of the lads um, like to get stuck into a few good, uh, good practical jokes on mm -hmm. tour. Um, but he's got, he's got a brilliant sense of humour. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, most people don't know that about him. Mm. Hopefully people can... Uh, in years to come, really, really find out who the real Henrik Stenson is. Right. He's hilarious. Are there any particular spring to mind, or do you not be saying them on camera? What, practical <laughs> jokes? Practical jokes, yeah. Well, there's, all, there's, all, there's always, um, I mean, I, I've shared numerous houses with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there's often, you know, little pranks and stuff being hidden, um, you know, little notes being wrote on people's golf balls in their bags, uh, inside people's gloves. Um, I mean, it's um, it's brutal. What what goes on? I mean, there's some there's some there's some pretty hardcore practical jokes happen, which I'm not going to tell you on okay, telly, I'll but there's some real, some real funny ones. Best dresser on tour or worst dresser, whatever's more <laughs> best and worst. Or <laughs> Come on, right? Is that really really a question? I was okay. just giving you the chance. I'm going to say, I mean, of course. And and worst. Best dressed. Um, worst dressed. I'm not going to name a name, but there's Probably so many best. very uncoordinated golfers yeah. who you see come out with a slightly green hat and a black shirt and navy trousers and brown shoes and Ensemble. a mess of colour. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Not good. Um, okay. It's if you... generally our American. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut that bit out. Um, if you could play any other sport other than golf, is there anything else you could accept? Football. Football? Because... I wanted to be a footballer. Mm -hmm. And I was told at an early age um, by Tottenham, thankfully, that I wasn't good enough. So had they have said I was good enough, I would have been retired. Mm -hmm. I'd have um, some aches and pains and probably some, some wounds. Mm -hmm. um, and I will be trying to play golf for fun. So mm -hmm. we've now flipped it the other way. Yep. Uh, I can watch the football uh, when I'm not playing golf. And I've still got a load of good years left. What would have been like playing for Tottenham as an Arsenal fan? Would you have been uh, able to be professional? That, that would have been, that wouldn't have been very good, would it? No. I mean, it would have been like Tim Sherwood. Yeah. You know, Arsenal fan, and so, I mean, it's um, it would have been quite tricky. Another own golfer for Poulter. Who would have thought? When did you start playing golf? When did you pick it up? Picked it up at the age of probably five. My dad chopped a club down, and uh, you know, from that moment on, I I followed him around the golf course at weekends, and. Loved it. I loved what, what it meant. Uh, I loved the getting out of trouble when you was in trouble, hitting recovery shots, bunker shots, chip shots, hole in putts. Um, yeah, I just, I, I just loved everything about golf. So, uh, yeah, that love and kind of passion for golf really comes through the way you kind of present yourself, particularly during the Ryder Cup. Where do you think that comes from, that passion? Why are more players maybe a bit more reserved, whereas particularly during the Ryder Cup? Team spirit, I guess, my football background, mm. wanting to become a football player and uh, the love of being part of a team mm. and that I get in the Ryder Cup. You know, you've got other teammates and captains and vice captains and, you know, you really do, do enjoy a, a really full-on week uh, at the Ryder Cup. 
Uh, well, talking about the Ryder Cup, what was it like talking to Sir Alex Ferguson before 2012, I believe he, he gave a pep talk? 2014. 2014. Yeah, I mean, it was um, not not that it was a pep talk. I mean, it w it really was it was Alex talking about how he managed his team mm. and the reason why he felt he was so successful doing that. I think that was that was what he wanted to share. He wanted to sh share some anecdotes, some stories, um, and some fun stuff, which everybody could relate to. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was nice of you know Sir Alex to give us you know give us part of his time. Everyone in the team respects what he's done in, in, in football terms and managerial terms. That's why it was so enjoyable to have him there. That's slightly off a bit. So you say Arsenal fan, what's the best Arsenal game you've ever seen? Well, I would say the FA Cup. I was there when uh, Ray Parler scored the 30 yard top corner against Chelsea. And yeah. um, after the game, well, before the game, I'd asked him if I could possibly have his, have his shirt. Right. which he agreed to give me and then he scored that lovely lovely 30 yarder and um i have the shirt at home so it. that's got to be one of that's... one of my favorite games of obviously um you know being there in person and having you know having spoke to ray before the game and um him agreeing to give me that shirt cool. you know it was mm. a pretty cool game that's pretty good are you able to watch many games arsenal games on tour? In, well, in America, yeah. uh, when we're over there, we can watch every single game. Okay. So unlike um, unlike the limited games that get shown in the UK, hmm. uh, we get every single game in the US. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, but I, you know, if if every game was shown on telly, this, the, the stadiums would be empty. So yeah. it's impossible to, to do that. So that's why, you know, the American coverage pay full whack for it. And we get the option to watch all the games. So, you know, so my, um, my disappointment of not being able to get to the stadium is obviously that's balanced out by watching all the games on TV while I'm over in, in America. Uh, if you were like the god of golf, how would you get like more people as excited and passionate about it as you were? Is anything if you'd I change? was god of golf, how would I get more people playing? But you've um, asked that before. It's about it's about the next generation of players. I think mm. that you you've got to start at the the young audience. You've got to get them interested in the game of golf, and you've got to make it fun for them. You know, I was. Uh, I was interested in a game of golf very young and obviously I followed it through and, and generally that's how it worked. You've got, um, you know, certainly here at Woburn, you know, I remember, you know, even being an assistant pro coaching some of the juniors mm. that I coached at the weekends are now fully fledged members here, here at Woburn Golf Club. So generally when they start young, they stay through mm -hmm. um, and that's the way we can really drive, you know, people to the game of golf. I've written this down. Do you often play crazy golf? Yes, is, I do. Yeah. Are you good? Are you good? Well, obviously. Um, I I play crazy golf often because Joshua, my three-year-old, is besotted with it. He absolutely okay. loves it. So, obviously, as a family man, I I love to take him to uh, you know to all the crazy golf. There's one uh, not far from here at Woburn. I think it's um, Windmill Hill, and obviously we go there. And uh, he loves the pirate ship down there. So we go putting around all of that. It's great times. I mean, I think any time, you know, you, you go to the crazy golf, it's always fun, a fun thing to do. Um, and obviously in Orlando, there's mm -hmm. plenty of them, obviously, you know, in certain areas. Um, so we kind of mix it up a bit and we, uh, we, we do that. We go as a family and we, we have good fun. Last question. Big football fan, decent golfer. Have you ever played foot golf? Oh, have you heard of foot golf? Uh, I have heard of foot golf. I haven't played foot golf. Okay, it's very, very good. I I hear it is good. Yeah, I mean, I I'll have to give it a try one day. All right, I'll hold you to it. All right, that's all we've got time for. Thank you very much. And you uh, are most welcome. And feel free to watch the British Masters this month on Now TV.